Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. NBA Draft, Thursday night, 7 o'clock, ESPN. We hope to be talking to Jay Williams about that shortly. I'm just ready for the suits, man. I'm here. I can acknowledge it. I can admit it. Draft night, in large part, is about them suits, right? And, again, we talked about this earlier in the show. Draft night, with regards to the suits, was more entertaining back before these boys got stylists, right? The NBA had to be like, and I think LeBron was the first one I remember really being out there with a suit that obviously a stylist had gotten him. Because we got to remember, that's around that time in the NBA where uh, these dudes are like, suit, what I need a suit for, right? NBA was trying to be like, hey, guys, you guys want to try on some of these suits? That suit don't go with my do-rag? Like, that, that was where we were in NBA history. And LeBron was like, nah, bro, I'm about to be putting on them suits. LeBron looked like, well, he's go what they call that, Shannon Communion? That all white suit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that, that, that's where LeBron was. And after that, we got cats that's out here wearing like it's about the crazy pattern on the suit, but they cut right now. I liked it better when the suits weren't cut right. I liked it better when the suits had all the buttons on it, or occasionally a dude would still have tags on the sleeves because that let me knew that he had come up. You missed the days of the Steve Harvey collection when oh, he yes. had the suits. Oh yes, but you think about that, like Shannon in college, right? Like, you know, where you see the dudes that have their first suits and they always forget to cut the tag off the sleeve, right? Like, that, that, that's a sign they don't know. They don't know that you're supposed to cut the tag in. You've you, you seen it before. May or may not have been that guy yeah, in college. Yeah, yeah, but you don't know until you know. And, like, everything about wearing a suit is learning it as you go along. Like, it's where everybody winds up. And so the draft would be just such an interesting place because you could just see, man, these cats are just getting started, right? Like, it's almost like watching, like, the eighth grade dads almost watching cats put their suits together because now they try to be more ambitious because they're going to be on TV. But now they went and got stylists and tailors and everything else and their suits wind up fitting right. That's not what I'm here for. I want pictures that we can all go back and laugh at later. You do, of course, realize what the most anticipated suit of the night is going to be, right? I want to see that official LeVar Ball oh, collection. The big baller suit. The big baller suit. Well, there's going to be a big baller tie, right? Because I feel like I have seen LeVar Ball on television wearing the big baller tie. I don't think he's going to wind up with one of them. Like, cat, even the old heads don't really wear the five button joints anymore. You don't you don't really see the old Steve. Steve Harvey don't even wear the Steve Harvey suits anymore. So what's the, what, what's the five button suit? For the new generation. And also, as much as we clown these cats about these five-button suits, I don't know about you, Shannon, but I once had a four-button suit, and it was fly. I had a navy blue four-button suit. So did I. It's a matter. Four, though. Not five, four. Did you ever have any wide-leg slacks? A wide leg, no, I didn't go there. I couldn't go wide-leg slacks, and I didn't go five-button, no. I did wide-leg mm-hmm. slacks once with, like, a different sport coat, and the sport coat had four buttons, too. But yeah, it was uh, it was I did I did the wide. It, it was it was the time, man. You couldn't tell me nothing about the wide leg slacks. I ain't getting no wide leg slacks to Goodwill until I moved to Miami. I kept them around. I was always like, man, the day might come where I need to break out these wide leg slacks one more time, just to show Stella I mean business. Get it tapered up, right? Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Tell you a quick story. So, uh, so my wife and I for our anniversary because we still she still has the wedding dress or whatever, and I don't have the tux. So I had a rented tux, but I still have the suit that I wore to our rehearsal dinner, right? So we thought it would be fun to for her to dress up in the wedding the wedding dress Ooh. and me put on the same suit that I wore that night. How, how are you breathing? One, I'm proud to say that the suit fit because okay. I recently lost weight within the last year. But secondly, that jacket was so big. <laughs> it came down to my knees. <laughs> it was a different time. Because I guess you got married, what, nine years ago, right? Yeah. It was a different time, man. Totally different time. And, like, how your stuff is supposed to fit. So here's what happens, at least in my life. I can't speak for anybody else. Significant changes in the paradigm of my wardrobe are all determined by whether or not I am in a serious relationship, right? So, like, in the year 2005, I got into a serious relationship. And you know what happened? All my clothes got smaller. I didn't get smaller, but my clothes got smaller. Why did my clothes get smaller? Because I had not had a serious girlfriend since my clothes were supposed to be bigger. 
I just had, right? Somebody got to come in and be like, okay, let's talk about the way these things are fitting because I don't have time to keep up with how these things are fitting. Like I go outside one day, the young boy's wearing these tight clothes. I can't be out here wearing these tight clothes. I can't do that. But, you know, got a little help moving in that general direction. Every time I had a serious relationship with a woman, one thing they do is help you get your gear right, right? Because it's somebody who loves you who can tell you, not necessarily that you look ridiculous, but you could stand to look less ridiculous. Does that make sense? That goes against everything that Mike Hitman says about your suit selection. He told you that you're not supposed to have your woman pick your suit out. No, no, no. Maybe she don't pick out your suit. But she can let you know. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but we don't wear big clothes anymore. All right? And so I'm skinny, so everything's big on me. Like, I don't even know what the definition of big is as it goes to that. But no, 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 it happens. You just make these changes, and that's how it comes down, right? That, that That's how it winds up going. Either way, I advocate for ridiculous suits at the draft. Not everybody does. I do. All right, 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Let's hit the phone. Let's talk to Patrick in Oakland. Patrick, thanks for calling the right time. Thanks for having me, Bo. Thank you, thank you for having me, Bo. Um, I just had a question. With Dwayne picking up his 24 mil for next year with trick body parts, how many years do you think LeBron will be able to be out here walking Jack somewhat efficiently <laughs> like his homie? Because he doesn't really have an injury hi- history, and I feel like I'm tripping for thinking that he could play 10 more years. Dude, here's the thing about it, man, and I appreciate the calls. Like, yes, it is ridiculous to think that LeBron James can play for 10 more years. The problem is I have nothing – like, what am I saying to tell you that, no, it can't be done? Like, I don't have it. Like, I wonder if it's going to be with LeBron. Like, if LeBron's going to fall off a cliff like a running back does or like Brett Favre where you thought Brett Favre was going to play forever and then it took like two weeks into that last season to be like, nah, Brett Favre is done right now. Like, I have no idea what the actual window is on LeBron's career, especially considering, yeah, so much of this is based on his physical dominance, his ability to just be the most athletic player on the court. But he's got all that other stuff in his game, too. So, like, if LeBron wanted to turn into a post dude and just hang around and hit, like, play that Robert Parrish game, he could do that, right? This is one question I posed to you. I think it was uh, towards the end of the finals. Should LeBron move the power forward full time? I've thought that his game should have evolved into power forward for quite a long time, except he, he ain't here for it, right? Like, he's not there for it. So, yeah, maybe there will be a point where he decides that in order for me to keep playing, I got to play power forward, except he'll be rich. Like, when's LeBron just going to get tired of playing basketball? Because I feel like that's going to be the end for LeBron. I'm tired of playing basketball. Like, tell me this. Do you think LeBron's going to go out like Kobe did? Like, broke down, come back, break down, come back? Like, do you think he's going to go out like that? Because I thought Kobe had the perfect chance to go out after you tore his Achilles because he shot the free throws. This is the most gangster thing in the world, right? I, I can't imagine how much pain he was in. He stayed out there, and he shot the free throws. That's going out. Nothing left. Kobe played, was it three more years after that? I believe it was three more years after that. You mean to tell me that, that LeBron's not going to force his last game and try to put up, I don't know, 60 points on 50 shots? His last meaningless game? He did put up 50 shots, didn't he? And Cass, they trying to tell me that that was some kind of legendary performance. Two words. Mamba out. All right, Jay Williams, by the way, will join us at 630, we think. 888-729-3776. Let's hit the phones and talk to Dirk in Georgia. Dirk, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, how's it going? Doing all right. Hey, y'all been talking about Dwight Howard. I'm a huge Hawks fan, and I'm so thrilled that they got rid of Dwight Howard. Um, The thing I want to know is the Hawks could potentially lose about six or seven players. Paul Millsap, Dabo Cephalosha, Tim Hardaway Jr. is a restricted free agent, Jose Calderon, Mike Muscala, Chris Humphreys. What the heck are they going to do? They are tearing this whole thing down. Like, that that seems to be what's going on here, is they seem to be tearing this whole thing down. And, Dirk, I appreciate the call. I had no idea which way it was going to go, by the way, with Dirk. Shannon, did you you have a bet? Because I was really like, I wonder what Dirk's going to sound like. Dirk and Georgia? Let's see. Yeah, I was just ready. That has become a new thing for us. There is no telling the name and location. Like, I think people are messing with us now. They call it up. Uh, up next on the line, let's talk to Raheem in Memphis. And he's going to have a British accent. 888-729-3776. Talk to Will from Georgia. Will, thanks for, Will from Detroit. Thanks for calling the right time. Yeah, it's Will from Detroit. But Monty, but Monty, say it ain't so. Say you're not wearing skinny jeans. No, 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 no. I don't wear skinny jeans. They just, my okay. jeans are just not as big as they used to be. You, you had me scared there for a second. 
No, I'm too skinny to wear skinny jeans, to be honest. I don't know what? if they make skinny jeans skinny enough for me to wear skinny jeans. I want I, I want to see the big baller brand suit, too, but I hope it's better than the shoes. I don't like them. Hey, Will, I'm with you, man. But, hey, we're right here on the commercial break, man. I'll talk to you soon. 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, we're going to check up on our Dwight Howard poll. Go to ESPN Radio's Twitter account. Vote on whether Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer or not. And prepare to be blown away by the results. You're listening to ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Series XM Channel 8. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Jay Williams will join us at 630, we think. Jay Williams will join us at 630 to talk about the NBA draft. That's the old soul song of the day, No Scrubs by TLC. And I have grown a great deal as a man um, because this song came out when I was 18 and I hated it. Hated it. Like, I had a car, but I'm like, come on, man, we in college, man. You know, like. My man just riding with me. He can't holler at you. What, what I got to drive to holler at you? I'm trying to save gas money. No That's sense in both of us driving if it's just the two of us. Just, oh, so you want a man that ain't got no respect for the environment. That's what you're saying right now? Like, that's what this is? We we carpooling right now. I'm just the only one with a car. Hey, you want to go to the 2017 ESPYs? You know, fly to L.A., walk the red carpet, go to the big party. How about going as the guest of this year's host, Peyton Manning? Make a donation to the V Foundation for Cancer Research of as little as $20. You could win an incredible ESPYs trip and the chance to meet Peyton Manning at a rehearsal before the show. Go to ebay.com slash ESPN to donate for your chance to win. That's ebay.com slash ESPN. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends June 29th. Go to ebay.com slash ESPN for contest rules. All right, now, we have had a poll on the ESPN Radio Twitter account. That's at ESPN Radio, and it is, is Dwight Howard a Hall of Famer, which I believe is a no-brainer answer, right? Shannon, what's the poll say? All right, we have over 3,000 folks have voted so far, and 59% of the audience thinks, no, Dwight Howard is not a Hall of Famer. 59%. How is this possible? Eight-time All-Star, five-time rebounding champion, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time leader in block shots. And he took a team to the finals before LeBron did. Got there one year after LeBron to the league. No, one year. No, 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 no. I'm talking about he got to the league. Oh, oh, 03, LeBron gets in. Howard gets in. Oh, 04, right? He gets a team there before LeBron does. Two years before LeBron could get a team to the finals. And LeBron had to come down to Miami to do that thing to get a team to the finals. But y'all ain't got Dwight in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. That's right. The 07 finals. You're right. <laughs> the most impressive thing LeBron's ever done, and it's so easy to forget. My fault. I got that wrong. That being said, still, not in the Hall of Fame. Not in the Hall of Fame. Go look at the roster on that 2009 um, Magic team and tell me Dwight ain't no Hall of Fame. But that's what it is. Moral of the story, man. Dwight thought he was doing everything he could to get everybody to like him, and instead got all these people to hate him. How wild is that, right? Like, he thought that, okay, doing this stuff and being the big cuddly guy. And don't forget that when he came in the league, that's kind of what people wanted, right? Has anybody ever been the more anti-Iverson than Dwight Howard, right? Went to the little small private school where his mama was the teacher, talking about putting the cross in the NBA logo, saying he was saving himself for marriage. <laughs> anyway, Dwight did all of that thinking that that would make y'all like him. And it's not just that y'all don't like him. Y'all dislike him so much that you're losing your ever-loving minds. Losing your minds. And for the folks who don't remember that team that Dwight took to the finals, his the second-best player on that team was Jameer Nelson. But let's not forget that Nelson got hurt that season. So the starting Skip. point guard for the Orlando <laughs> Magic in the NBA Finals was one skip to my love. Ray for Austin was the starting point guard. Who played? All right, so it was Ray for Austin, uh, Rashad Lewis, Turkaloo, Dwight, who else started on that team? They, I don't think JJ Reddick started. They had was uh, Trevor Ariza on that team. Uh, no, he was on the Lakers. Yeah, no, then. no Ariza, no. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, was it uh, Tony Batie? Keith, Keith Tony Batie was on that team. Yeah, he was still in the league in 2009. Yeah, Brian Cook, Marcin <laughs> Gotat was the backup center. Courtney Lee, I think he started. Courtney Lee, as there a we rookie. Go. It was Courtney Lee as a rookie. A rookie, Courtney Lee. Yeah. 
Uh, Dwight's not a Hall of Famer. What do you? What, you guys are crazy. Tune in tonight as the Rockies host the Diamondbacks. Coverage begins at 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Uh, let's hit the phones and talk to John in New Jersey. John, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, Bomani, what's happening? Doing all right? All I want to say is 59% of the people that y'all polled are idiots. I agree. There's no way in the world. People forget the Superman case. I want people to think about the last physical specimen at 6'11", 275, that dominate like Dwight Howard. You got all these people commentating. JaVale McGee gets an alley-oop, and he's this physical specimen. You heard it in the playoffs. Oh, his athleticism. Dwight Howard was the physical specimen. People got short memories in the NBA, and the only reason he's so disrespected is because he was actually a decent dude. Think about it. No scandals, no issues. And even when he left Orlando, he gave them a free year because he was a nice dude. Well, I will say this, and I appreciate the call. He didn't give Orlando another year because he's a nice dude. He gave him a nice year because he went weak, right? He gave him that last year because he went weak. I would also say that that no scandal thing is a little bit tricky. Uh, yeah, we bit, we bit, we bit. But other, also the other thing about Dwight, Dwight's not six eleven. Go look at a picture of Dwight standing among his peers. He ain't six eleven. Eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. Talk to Tristan in Virginia Beach. Tristan, thanks for calling the right time. Hey, hey, my what's up? Doing all right? And I want to say he is a Hall of Fame. I just don't understand the hate from it. It probably stems from the bad blood with a lot of Lakers fans. And me being a Lakers fan, I can see why people are sore. But just look at his look at his numbers compared to guys like Ralph Sampson, of all people, that's in the Hall of Fame. It's not that hard to get in the NBA Hall of Fame or the Basketball Hall of Fame. So he's more than he's more than worthy for that Hall of Fame. No, nah, I think you're right there, Tristan. I appreciate the call. Shannon Tristan from Virginia Beach. That was another one I thought could go either way, and I'm not sure which way it went. Thanks for listening. <laughs> 888-729-3776-T from Texas. Thanks for calling the right time. What's going on, Bo? Doing all right? Man, you know, people hating on the White House, but they don't understand. Alonzo Mourner, he in the Hall of Fame. And I think it goes to that person. People can't separate their personal feelings. From what's fact, like the White House was dominant, man. And I want to say one more thing, man. You made a comment by Beaumont people a while back, man. I want to want to hear you say something about that. What's wrong with Beaumont people? I didn't say anything bad about Beaumont. I, I we said I believe somebody sounded like they were from Beaumont, and I have to say, and I appreciate the call. Uh, yeah, we talking about Kendrick Perkins. You just sound like you're from Beaumont. By the way, T from Texas sounded exactly like I thought T from Texas would say. He rated like right now. What you got to say about Beaumont now? I tell you what I got to say about Beaumont. I don't plan to go there anytime soon. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Javi in New Jersey. Javi, thanks for calling the right time. Javi. What's going on, Beaumont? Doing all right. Listen, man, number one, I love you to death. I love when you're on TV. I Appreciate share it. a lot of your opinions with you. But two things. Number one, I'm a huge Laker fan. Howard is definitely a Hall of Famer. Although I'm a huge Laker fan, it hurts me to say that. He's no question a Hall of Famer. Number two, what you said about Kobe was disrespectful, man. What? The the reason why he came back after that Achilles injury is because he has the heart of a champion. It's not because he needed anything else. His mind would not let him lose. He didn't know anything but winning, and he went to chase for another title. And he, came, and, 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 and he came back and did a whole lot more losing. Thanks for calling the hobby. 888-729-3776. I didn't mean to cut him off, but we got to get to Jay Williams next. Find out what he thinks about these dudes in the NBA draft. Assuming he picks up the phone. You're listening to ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Our guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. So the Rockets trying to make a move at Chris Paul? Your man, sources, sources. My sources. Sources hollered at ESPN. Sources said that the Rockets have four top-tier free agents in their sights for this summer. Paul Millsap, Kyle Lowry, 
Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, and that the expectation is that they will go hard after Chris Paul. And, in fact, Ryan Anderson, Lou Williams, and Patrick Beverly can be available to you in a trade to perhaps make cap space in order to bring in one of these free agents. According to sources, that Utah is really interested in Patrick Beverly, which one would be very funny to see Patrick Beverly <laughs> playing in Salt Lake City. <laughs> yeah, there is that, right? That is perhaps one of the more ironic pairings that we would have in the NBA. Um, one thing I have to give Maury, right, because I don't love everything about the way Maury does business in Houston, he's always in a position to make something happen to make something happen. Like, I think there's nobody in the league as a general manager who's better at having a roster that maintains the requisite flexibility to make a move if there's a move that becomes available. So, like, when uh, James Harden became available, <laughs> your man Maury's like, oh, I can make a move. Anyway, switching gears just a little bit, the NBA draft Thursday night coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN. Jay Williams will be there, and he's on with us right now. Now, we've heard everything about Markel Fultz, but, Jay, most of us haven't seen Markel Fultz play because we weren't watching Washington. Are you buying him as the number one pick the way everyone else seems to be? Well, obviously, Philadelphia is. I mean, they traded up for the first pick in the draft. And, and here's my thing I'll say about this, Romani. I love the kid as a player, right? He's an underdog. This is the guy that was on JV as a freshman in his high school in D.C. So he's always had to outwork people. He wants to be the best. He, he's filled with that piss and vinegar. Now, look, Philadelphia's probably going to have two guys that came from losing teams, uh, but the culture isn't going to change too much apparently, but they'll have to change the culture from within. I just don't I, – I don't know if I see him as a transcendent player. Like, I think he's a guy that can make $150 million with a new CBA coming in. That's not going to require a lot. I mean, he'll put up good numbers. I see Ben Simmons more as a transcendent player. I see Markel Fultz more as a, a perimeter scorer that can maybe get you 19, 20 points a night. But I don't know if I see him being that guy that takes your franchise to the next level like I see a Ben, ben Simmons or a Joel Embiid. Well, do you see anybody in this draft fitting that bill? I do. I, I see two players. Actually, I see Lonzo Ball. And I know he comes with a lot of drama. But I'm telling you, man, when, you, when you're around a kid like this on the court, he, he breeds success because he gets everybody involved, right? Like you hear, and, and granted, we might associate greatness with guys who can put up a lot of points, okay, with the Kobe Bryant to Michael Jordans, LeBron James. And I'm not taking anything away from those guys. But there is a greatness that comes along with compatibility and the ability to play together as a unit. And when Lonzo Ball is on a team, if he has the right pieces around him, that's when the Lakers will be something special. It's gonna, they're going to need, need to be patient with him because they need to get like a Paul George or some bigger pieces around him. But I think he is one. I think Jason Tatum is another from Duke. I watched this dude last year in Durham give the business to Jabari Parker for three days straight. They were going back and forth. You, uh, you would not have known that Jabari Parker was playing at the level he was playing at because Jason Tatum was competing with him, and it almost seemed equal. So if you're watching a kid that put up points like that, like I almost can say in, in, a, in a facet, he learned a lot at Duke, but the Duke system in a way almost held him back because he couldn't take pro-like shots. Like he's going to be a guy that's going to be in the pinch post, turn and face, jab set, jump shot, get to the rim, uses you know, a variety of moves around the rim to finish over the top of you. Like that, that kid just has an understanding of how to play. So I would say those would be my two transcendent players in the top ten. All right, we are talking to Jay Williams of ESPN here on the right time. Now, you mentioned Lonzo Ball. You say you saw him probably going number two to the Lakers. Where do you think Boston should go with three? Is Tatum your guy? I, I would go with Jason Tatum. Look, Jalen Brown is more of a defensive type of guy. Jason Tatum reminds me more of a, of a Paul Pierce-like player. He can give you that offense. Now, Danny Ainge it, it could still make some moves. I think he gave some bait the other day by saying the player we would have drafted at number one, we'll still draft at number three. I think he's making Sacramento hot. I think he's making Sacramento wait. You know, who, who knows? Sacramento thinks he's going to draft, you know, a guy like De'Aaron Fox. They're, try, they're probably going to try to trade up to get that pick. Uh, Danny Ainge decides to take – I'm surprised he actually didn't take the third pick for Jimmy Butler. So I think he's definitely going to go with a, a Jason Tatum-like player. Yeah, what do you think about this? Because I was surprised by that also, that I feel like guys get so in love with the idea of having ass assets that you forget sometimes is this is the way to cash in. Well, here's my thing, uh, Bomani. Like, I, I love watching Jimmy Butler play. Jimmy Butler used to be a blue-collar-like player. And what I mean by that is he got after it on both ends of the floor. And I'm not saying that he doesn't anymore. But I'm saying that there have been rumors around Chicago that the overall mentality of who Jimmy Butler is has changed. He went from being a blue-collar guy to being an elite citizen type of guy, right? And I've heard that's provided issues for them. So, look, these GMs, 
these presidents, they talk to each other. They, they hear the issues that teams are having with certain players. And a guy like Jason Tatum doesn't bring any drama to the table. Uh, and you know what he's all about. I'm not saying we don't question what Jimmy's about because Jimmy wants to win too. Uh, just a lot of static around Jimmy Butler right now in these trade talks. All right, we are talking to Jay Williams on the right time. Now, after we get out of those top five or six guys, we hear those same names come up over again. Who do you think lower in the draft is a guy that people should keep an eye on? You know, I get asked this question all the time about who's going to be a Draymond Green-like player, and I go with a kid from Indiana. His name is O.G. Anuobi, and he suffered an injury that kept him out for most of the year around February and March. But, look, he was on the cusp of becoming somewhat of an offensive threat. He was a guy mentality-wise that was just starting to figure out what it took to be an alpha male at a, at a Power 5 school on a big level and be that guy who was targeted each and every night offensively. But I still think that his size and his frame are things that defensively you can't take away from him. He is so damn quick laterally, Bolani. And his ability to, with his wingspan and his quickness to be a, a defensive juggernaut is exactly what he can be and his offensive game eventually will come around. So I think he'll be a steal in the draft. Now, is there anybody that the rest of us are really hot on that you're not feeling so much? Uh, you know, I, I think this draft is deep. I, I think it's very deep. I think a name that I haven't heard people talk about, which shocks me because I've seen this kid play so much, is Dennis Smith Jr. He reminds me of Baron Davis, man. And, and people can say, hey, look, sometimes he seemed lethargic. He didn't see into the game. Like, I've known this kid, right? Like, there was a lot of stuff around the RDU area, which is Raleigh-Durham Triangle area in North Carolina, because he went to school at NC State and played for Mark Gottfried. That they kind of bunted heads sometimes. That they didn't get along properly, and that kind of forced him to check out. But when this kid is engaged, like, there may not be a better PG in the draft. And like, he tore his ACL two years ago, okay, before he came into college. And now he still has a 43-inch vertical. Like, his game is getting better and better and better. He dropped 30-plus on Duke inside Cameron Indoor Stadium. And uh, the, this kid just has incredible upside. So he's a guy people should pay more attention to. Well, how do, you worry, how, do you worry about these point guards who led teams that did not win? No, because I, I think for a lot of them, man, nobody really knows how to lead yet. Right? Like it, And that's why I think I like Lonzo Ball. I mean, he, he was able to build a culture of success at UCLA, even though – De'Aaron Fox gave him the business in that, you know, in two games pretty much. But I don't think you really learn how to lead until you get to the biggest stage. And that's where, depending upon the team you get drafted to, I think people overlook how important it is to get drafted to a team with upper management that helps you or breeds a culture for you to be successful. Like it, 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 it's so imperative for a lot of these young kids. And, you know, you get, I get worried about a guy like De'Aaron Fox if you were to go to the Sacramento Kings. Like that's not a culture – of success. That's a culture that breeds more of individualism and, and selfishness. And that, that's, you know, granted they're trying to change that, but do you really trust in their upper management? Whereas if you're Alonzo Ball and you're spending time around the likes of uh, Magic Johnson, uh, Rob Palenka, who obviously is, you know, Kobe's agent and spend time with Kobe, like that's a, that's a, that's a different family environment that is more conducive to you being great at the next level than another situation. All right, that's Jay Williams. Check him out on our draft coverage tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern. Coverage begins on ESPN. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. All right, brother. All right, now, nothing makes a summer birthday or anniversary more magical than 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, when you order a dozen multicolored roses for only twenty nine ninety nine, you'll get another dozen absolutely free. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. We know you can't be on top of all the news and information of the day. Now, if you haven't heard... It was all good just a day ago for the Cavs when it looked like they were going to land either Jimmy Butler or poor George. And now it seems they may not land either. And if you haven't heard, here's Bomani Jones early on the right time discussing the Cavs offseason. How are you feeling, Cavs fans? I feel like the last couple of days we were getting y'all all sized up. They, they was going to get Jimmy Butler. Maybe there's a chance for Paul George because you think Paul George probably needs to move before the draft. Got you guys all charged up about the possibility of the Cavaliers making one of those big moves that you feel like they need to make in order to compete with the Golden State Warriors. I think we spent all this time getting y'all jazzed up about that. And a big part of why we wound up getting y'all jazzed up about that was we were thinking that you need to go ahead and make these moves and make it happen because you're basically only guaranteed one year of LeBron James and it's starting to feel like LeBron James is going to chuck the deuce and leave. 
So we got you all excited about all the things that might happen coming up to the NBA draft. And then Jimmy Butler is like, nah, nah I'm straight. I, I don't really want to do that. We're getting the whispers that Jimmy Butler does not wish to play for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Some are even whispering that Jimmy Butler has gone. We are not reporting this. Mark Stein says this is not happening, but some are whispering. And Jimmy Butler hollered at some of the Cavs, and the Cavs like, nah, bro, you don't want to be no part of this. Now, I am inclined to believe that story is not true. And here's why I'm inclined to believe that story is not true. I'm inclined to believe that story is not true because it's not that miserable for the Cavs, right? That was the case. Like, everybody is officially trying to get out of there themselves at that moment. Reality is the Cavs are a bunch of really competitive basketball players who just lost to the Warriors who have to look around and ask themselves, yo, I think we could use a guy like Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler will probably make us better. So you're telling me that the dudes on the Cavs who are going to be there next year regardless are like, nah, we don't want to get closer to a championship, Jimmy. Don't come here. Why? Because they don't want Jimmy to get okie doke You think they're worried about Jimmy getting okie doke So could this Cavs thing really be over after next year? Yep. <laughs> like everything. We, we, we already talked a lot about LeBron, but now you're hearing the whispers about Kyrie and his interests. Could this thing really be over after next year? Well, it's over if LeBron leaves. Like, here's the thing about it. Kyrie, but like, I want to go somewhere else. Okay, but we're not going to trade you. Boom, you're staying. Kevin Love, I want to go somewhere else. And? So, yeah, if LeBron, I mean, it, it's not a thing if it's not LeBron. And LeBron, good chance he might be out of there. All right, some of the other big news around the NBA, especially from last night, Dwight Howard traded from the Hawks to Charlotte. And we posed a question on the ESPN Radio Twitter account. We had a poll asking the question, is Dwight Howard a Hall of Famer? We got over 3,600 votes, and 59% of the audience said no, Dwight's not a Hall of Famer. 59%. This is insane to me. And there's... And, and, and... That's wild, Dwight. Um, and I'm reading some of the comments from the poll, and most people are either, yes, definitely a Hall of Famer, or absolutely not. There's no middle ground that seems to be there with Dwight. No, because there shouldn't be a middle ground, because he's an absolute Hall of Famer. There's no question. By the way, if you haven't heard, it's brought to you by Saks. Try Saks underwear with their patented ballpark pouch, or give the man in your life life-changing underwear. Go to SaksUnderwear.com. That's S-A-X-X underwear.com. I there was a picture circulating yesterday on Twitter of Kawhi Leonard, and apparently Kawhi has cut his braids. Now, oh. as someone who wore cornrows at one point in time, Me too. please – I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm referring to you. Oh, okay. Could you please explain to the folks what goes into the decision – finally cut the braids well it wasn't ever really a finally one for me it reminds me of that time that uh my father came up to me with some braids as i did not have a job at the time and he walked up to me with two twenty dollar bills and one of them he said was uh to get gas for the car and i was like appreciate you because i was down on e and then the other one was for a haircut and he told me to get a job so uh you know I pretty much did it right there. Yeah, I also had another situation where I needed to get my hair braided, but I couldn't find anybody to do it. And I was just like, this is too much stress for me to be going through. I'm just not doing this. Right. Apparently, the fans in Philadelphia are all in and trusting the process because the Sixers have already sold 14,000 season tickets for next year, which is a franchise record, and it currently leads the NBA in season tickets for next season. Did Joel and B buy one? Man. Do, they, do they charge? Do they, do man, they, come do, on, do man. They, do they charge Joel Embiid full price for his season tickets? Oh, the wet blanket on the optimism, <laughs> did, did ben, man. Did, did Ben Simmons have it taken out of his check? <laughs> <laughs> his, I mean, also good seats them dudes had, man. Right there up front. Like, as much as they charge everybody else for season tickets, they had to charge these cats for the world, right? They pl- they're playing next year, right? I mean, they're going to try. I mean, I've been busy. They're going to give it give it the old college try. You better watch out, Markel Fultz. You're going to be sitting right next to him. Look, the last thing the six is what does it do with no medical issues? Then you won't mess around and lose and get more play, like more assets. But, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us here on The Right Time. We do this every weekday, 4 p.m. Eastern. Shannon Nuno, Steven, thanks so much. Jalen Jacoby are coming up next. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Right Time Podcast. Please come back tomorrow for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.